the world now has been in the midst of a war on drugs on a worldwide basis. Uh, and the assumption underlying that, uh, I'd say, is largely mistaken. The assumption is that the drugs cause violence. Most people think that when people take drugs, the drugs make them more violent. Uh, in fact, the opposite is true. Uh, two of the most commonly used drugs actually make people less violent. Those are homicide, I'm sorry, marijuana and heroin and, and its congeners like morphine and Demerol and so forth. Um, when people are, have those chemicals in their bloodstream, and then it, there are also animal studies, there are a dozen different research approaches to show this, um, human and animal. Um, these drugs tranquilize people. They don't make them more violent. In fact, morphine is called morphine because uh, it's named for Morpheus, the god of sleep <laughs> in Greek mythology. It puts people to sleep. It doesn't make them more violent. Um, the stimulant drugs like amphetamines and cocaine uh, can cause violent behavior in some people who are sort of borderline paranoid, and it can bring out a paranoid psychosis with delusions, uh, which can lead to violent behavior. But actually, there are many conditions in which cocaine, uh, well, drugs that have the same effect as cocaine or amphetamines, uh, CNS stimulants that operate through the same biochemical and physiological pathways, actually diminish violence. For example, uh, stimulant drugs are given to children with uh, attention deficit disorder and hyperactivity. And uh, when those diagnoses have been rigorously diagnosed and studied, what has been found, there are many double-blind studies showing that uh, it diminishes the rate of violent and aggressive behavior on the part of those children. Um, these drugs, similar drugs, are also used in amphetamines and others to treat many medical conditions from narcolepsy to obesity without violence being reported as a significant side effect. So it, it would be hard to conclude that the drugs that we have um, outlawed and which we spend billions and billions of dollars every year on a worldwide scale um, trying to get rid of uh, actually cause violence. They, they actually either don't have a net inf in influence of increasing violence, as with the, the stimulant drugs, or they actually diminish it. The only drugs that really are dangerous are two legal drugs. One is alcohol, and the other is tobacco. Uh, so we've succeeded in outlawing the drugs that are either harmless or actually diminish violence, and we have legalized the two drugs that actually do kill people. Alcohol is the only drug that has really been shown at scientifically acceptable levels to increase the propensity for violent behavior. Um, and it's perfectly legal. Of course, we've, we've, we tried prohibiting it in the US during the 1920s. And what we wound up with was Al Capone and, and bootleggers and the St. Valentine's Day massacre on the streets of Chicago. And once, uh, once we uh, repealed the prohibition of alcohol, I'm going to say, first of all, the murder rate went up after we pro prohibited it. But it was mostly criminals fighting each other. And once we uh, repealed prohibition, the murder rate went, went down. Um, tobacco, though, is the worst of all. Tobacco is the most addictive drug that we know of. It's more addictive than heroin or amphetamines. It also is the only one of those that just in and of itself causes death. You know, it causes lung cancer, it causes heart disease, it causes all kinds of mechanisms of death. Um, but it's legal. And the US government even uh, subsidizes tobacco growing on the part of some farms. I would suggest that one of the major causes of violence in the world is the criminalization of drugs. And that if we decriminalize them and regarded them as a public health issue rather than a <coughs> criminal issue, uh, we would put the drug dealers out of business tomorrow, just like the bootleggers went out of business the moment alcohol was, was legalized. I'm not saying that these drugs should be available to buy like candy in a drugstore or something. But I think they can be managed as a public health issue. 
Uh, many European countries have experimented with that. And really what I'm suggesting is more of an experimental approach rather than a, you know, I don't have a perfect way to do it. But I think we can find out what works uh, through experimenting with different methods of creating a situation in which it can, be regarded, it can be handled by departments of public health, and people will know what dosage of something they're getting. They'll know that it's pure and not adulterated, which you don't know with, when drugs are bought on the street. People won't have to buy these drugs from a criminal. Uh, they won't be committing a crime when, when they uh, dispense them. But I would like to see them brought within the public health community and, uh, and perhaps made available to people uh, at, level, at the rate they can afford in public health clinics, while at the same time offering and encouraging substance abuse treatment. Because in my experience, most people who are addicted to one drug or another actually would like to overcome their addiction. Uh, they are asking for help. One of the problems with their getting help is we put so much money into criminalizing it and putting people in prison for it that we've not been giving enough money to the substance abuse clinics. So that the more overcrowded our prisons have become, and the US now, as you probably know, has the highest imprisonment rate in the entire world, even more than the so-called police states. Um, so the more overcrowded the prisons have become, the longer the waiting lists have been for substance abuse treatment. So we've done exactly the wrong, the wrong thing. 